he, while you were out there having fun in another world, he was tra- he was studying the blade. <laughs> <laughs> while you were picking up girls, I was studying the blade. Welcome back, Warriors of Light, to another bi-weekly episode of the Free Company Chat Podcast, where today we'll be talking about Paladin, our new overlords for Endwalker. I'm the host, your local Amaro Mount owner, Ryan. I'm here, joined by our local monk main, Kevin. Yo, what's up? And Chris. Uh, hi, what? <laughs> Chris? Just Chris. All right, Whatever. So I think the best place to start right now for Paladin is to actually use a quote from the Lodestone. From the Lodestone? Whoa, we're going out of the game. Yeah, we're going a little bit out, but this quote I think is a good way to like talk about like Paladin's role, but also not only that, but like some of the lore aspects of Paladin as a class. Mm -hmm. Uh, The Lodestone states, For centuries, the elite of the Sultan Sworn have served as personal bodyguards to the royal family of Uldah. Known as paladins, these men and women marry exquisite swordplay with stalwart shieldwork to create a style of combat uncompromising in its defense. Clad in brilliant silver armor, they change they charge fearlessly into battle, ever ready to lay down their lives to, for their liege. To be a paladin is to protect, and those who choose to walk this path will become the iron foundation upon which the party's defense is built. And so I think that's a really good way to start this because of the fact that a lot of the paladins are actually originally sultan sworn and so they're directly connected to Ulda and the sultana mm. and so so every, so every paladin is sworn to nanimo not the like from based on the lore a lot of them are but there's also a thing called free paladins which is what they've kind of had to resort to over the years and a lot of recent years because their numbers have thinned so much within the world ah with the soul not enough, hmm? so i say not enough uh not enough benefits being a paladin for the sultana pretty much with the rise of the monetarists in uh Ola, oh yeah yeah, they've managed to strip away a lot of the power of the Sultan, the Sultana, and with that, they've also managed to corrupt and also lower the strength in the Sultan Sworn as well throughout the entire city state. Hmm. Gotta love it. All duh, baby. <laughs> so, what you're telling me is capitalism strikes again. Yeah, it's pretty much struck down the Paladins as much as they could. And it's one of the reasons it's because of these and the fact that the monetarists, believe it or not, are actually doing a lot of like, I, I know it's hard to believe, but they're doing a lot of underhanded planning and scheming. No. <laughs> what? That That's even, news to me, buddy. They even like try to plan like assassination attempts for the Sultana during broad daylight for a lot of the Jesus. days. And so the paladins are so few in number, and within so few, even with the f- their few in number, there's some of them that are even corrupted and have already been in the pockets of the monetarists, that even the f- few paladins they have, they can't fully trust everybody. And so they're spread so thin throughout all of Ulda, trying to combat these assassination attempts, while also trying to fight and protect the sultana herself. Huh, okay. Now I'm just imagining a bunch of paladins surrounding the Sultana at all times. And then a freaking, like, machinist, like, fires off his gun. You just get a bunch of paladins clinking armor and shit. Be like, get down, Mr. Sultan. It's <laughs> just a wall, just a silver wall. They're, like, linked in arms together and marching <laughs> forward. <Like> a phalanx. <laughs> <laughs> God. Just, like, all, like, six of them, like, linked in arms, circled around the Sultana, and they just all, like, <laughs> shuffle together, follow, like, just surrounding her. We I are shield. Would just make her an easy target. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, you see that giant gleaming thing in the desert? Yeah, that's the Sultana. <laughs> just God. the sun just creating this blinding light. It's just like, oh, I wonder what that is over there. <laughs> God. It's because of this, like, they're so few in numbers and they're constantly fighting in and outside of Old Daw. That's why there was actually no Sultan Sworn during the assassination that happened at the end of Rum Reborn. Mm. 
Because, like, <laughs> if they had the people, there would have been a Sultan Sworn in that fucking room. And just like, nah, you, she ain't drinking that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Let me taste it. Let me taste it. <laughs> little taste. little taste. So yes. I got a question, then. Yes. Uh, as the Warrior of Light, are we Sultan Sworn or are we Free Paladin? You're a Free Paladin. So because of how few in numbers they are, they've started doing this thing called Free Paladins. And so they're trying to teach the way of the Paladin to adventurers to try and allow them to take over the roles of protecting those in Eorzea because they just cannot anymore. No. Yeah, it's a, it's a double duty job, right? Yup. Sultana and uh, the state of the citizenry, right? Yeah, you gotta take care of all of it. That's why, the, the well, like, I don't know if you remember, but near the end of Realm Reborn, uh, Telegi Adelegi started that uprising that happened in Little Alamigo and the Alamegan refugees. Right. Mm. And the Sultan Sworn had to do, like dedicate quite a few people to help stop that uprising because of Telegi. And that was a majority of them. That way we never really saw them. You kind of get a glimpse of them, but there's not, like I said, there's just not a lot of paladins at this point. Mm. It really, the state of the paladins is really, it really highlights just the state of Alda in general, doesn't it? Yeah. like Literally one incident from collapsing in on itself. Almost every time you're dealing with, are they called the bronze blades or the copper blades? I can't remember. I think they're copper blades. Every time you're dealing with the Copper Blades, which I think is a monetarist funded bandit group. It, it's the, it basically bandit group posed as guards. They're thugs. Uh, every time you deal with them, it, they're unsavory uh, and you have to kind of like muscle your way through. And then you rarely get to see the silver gleam of a paladin around. Yep. Because there's just there's not enough of them. They just can't do anything anymore. Didn't are the this is kind of off topic, but this is going into like Heaven's Word. Um, did the Holy See have any like? Was the like church like their version paladins? Did they basically have like paladins for their church? They have uh, people who are trained, obviously, in sword and shield. Um, they have their knights as well. Uh, I guess the Knights of Ishgard would be kind of their own thing, huh? Yeah. Yes. It's I wouldn't qualify those as paladins. They have, I mean, obviously they have the same style of fighting because sword shield, but yeah. And so, like, they have similar weapon styles and stuff like that. But to be a paladin specifically is a job and job stone that is directly given to you from the Sultan Sworn themselves in Old Ah. Uh, it's not like the other jobs where you either find it on a dead body or a guy stares at you for a little too long. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And so I think the lore is really cool about paladins and like their dwindling numbers. And that's the only reason like your character gets an opportunity is because of this dire situation they're in. Because your character has to prove themselves. And they do through all of the gladiator quest lines uh, where you team up with Mila, Swordsong, and Aldis. Oh, as you're trying like, to clear. those quests were good too yeah Mila and Aldis and their relationship is so great there's so right. much fun to have like just see them interact with each other there's so much like like I I used to give shit to Old Dog because of how much of a train wreck it is but like <laughs> yeah. this the quests there are so rich yeah they're so rich rich Old and perfect I'd say Uldah is like a train wreck of a city-state, but it's because of that, it's the most interesting by far of the three starting zones. Easily for me, at least. I find all of the stuff about the Sultana, the Monetaris, and how even the Thaumaturge's Guild is connected to the Order of Nalthal, uh, that even all is also part of the Syndicate, and then it's just, everything's connected into Uldah's little, like, ecosystem it's so great like everything just is perfect with each other honestly i feel like you could make an argument that will is like the canon start to the to the game i think you could definitely make that argument because i think old dog gives you the most important information as a starting zone well for... also 
if you didn't start in Uldah, the whole thing with like Thancred doesn't really hit the same. <laughs> yeah. Because we literally me. met Thancred for like 10 minutes before he turned on us. <laughs> Maybe you, you guys did. Him, I started in Uldah, so I got to meet that dude. <laughs> yeah. But with uh, the Gladiator quest line, it was a lot of fun to go through that. And then it's because of her recommendation that uh, Jinlin's even actually hears you out to be a free paladin. And so Jinlin's is <laughs> the blonde haired dude in the paladin armor that you meet for the very first time at level 30. Uh, he's got the really bad looking sideburns and mustache combo. <laughs> oh my god. And, like, even though I am dogging on him a little bit, his job fucking sucks. <laughs> because he actually just recently, like, before, like, meeting you, he barely has become the captain of the Sultan Swarm. Oh, Jesus. And he was forced into that position. <laughs> oh, right. Because the original his, captain. His original captain and his mentor left. <laughs> He just fucking, he fucking disappeared. He just straight up disappeared. So Jinlin is the find out about him is worse. Yeah, I'll say you get a lot more details about his, uh, his mentor and former captain uh, Sulkzigil. Sulkzagil. Oh. It's mm. it's a rugged name. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it looks like keyboard smashing. Man, come on. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Especially if you start in Limza, that's rough. Um, because I really felt bad because from his point of perspective, uh, Sulkzigil, uh, took the legendary weapon from the Paladins, uh, and the Sultan Sworn, uh, Oathkeeper. And so Oathkeeper goes missing and then Sulkzigil leaves and quits being a Sultan Sworn and runs away. And so huh. Jen Lins is now forced to be the new captain and he has to deal with a fallout that the former captain is now believed to have stolen Oathkeeper from Uldah. Because huh. Oathkeeper is actually a sword that's not like owned by one person. It's owned by the captain of the Sultan's Horn, and it's passed from generation to generation, even going all the way back to the very first paladin in Uldah, uh, which I think his name here it is Jal Tristram the True. And he was a Midlander hire uh, here, sworn to the service of Uldah's founder, Sasabal Ul Sisabel the First. You're just spitting out gibberish, my guy. <laughs> I'm throwing out names, dude. <laughs> and so with that, Jin Lins is now having to figure out how to protect the Sultana, stop the assassination attempts, also try and stop the Monetarius from corrupting even for Paladins, while also trying to figure out what the hell happened to the former captain, Sulkzigal, and the find Oathkeeper. Is. <laughs> on top of the already failing network of paladins yup <laughs> wow that's a shitty promotion yeah he did not have it easy at all and so he's kind of a jerk a little bit at the start of the quest lines and then when you're first like trying to learn how to be a paladin you end up running into Sulksigal who gives like a little hint to you and everything and like after like he talks to you a little bit he like walks away and he does the the little wave snap thing that everyone always associates with Emmett. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he did it first, though. But okay. <laughs> God. Um, and then because of that meeting, though, Jin Lins now suspects that you are also corrupted. Oh, Fuck. oh yeah, because, you know, he's considered a traitor. <laughs> yep. And so Jin Lins then tries to fight you and Soxagol because he thinks you're both traitors. And so you have to like beat some sense into him, and then after you do that, you then come across the, one of the monetarists' uh, assassination attempts, and then you all three team up and you become best buds. And then we get a, and then like he gets a little bit of closure where Sulksigal then gives us the exposition that the monetarists actually stole Oathkeeper and are trying to sell it away from Uldah. And so Sulksigal, with the failure of protecting Oathkeeper. That's why he himself left because he felt he failed as a captain. And then he wants to redeem himself by reobtaining Oathkeeper and giving it back to Uldah. Did he ever explain how he lost it? No, not really. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't explain either. <laughs> yeah, that shit's just gone, dude. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how the monetarists got it, man. Like, 
It was in my scabbard on my belt. And then it's just it's gone. gone. You, got, you got pickpocketed with the most important sword. <laughs> right, the thing that's strapped to your belt. Yeah, the thing that's just literally like 30 pounds on your on your waist. <laughs> just gone, you know. And then all of that lore then goes into the Heaven's Ward quest line. Where Heaven's Ward, uh, we get to get more details about how uh, free paladins work a bit and how adventurers are chosen. And then we even reobtain Oathkeeper itself in Heaven's Ward quest line. Where to prove how like dedicated to our oath we are, we end up having a fight with the other free paladin in Heaven's Ward. And then after our victory, uh, we are able to have Oathkeeper shine for the first time as since for like 30 years. Jesus. <laughs> because only those who are true to their oath and uh, dedicated and persistent in their ideals can make Oathkeeper's true power shine. And so you think you would get like a super cool weapon out of that quest line and then your character's just like, all right, here you go, Jinlins, you can have it back. <laughs> I didn't really want this anyway. Oh my god. So now Jin Lins has Oathkeeper again because of Heaven's Ward quest line. You better and... tape that shit to his body. <laughs> yeah, I know. Make sure that shit never goes anywhere. Duct tape that shit on there. And then, like, Stormblood's quest lines, like, kind of goes back to the original Gladiator stuff. It just doesn't bring up any of the Paladin shit anymore. Uh... Right, I noticed that. <laughs> Right, because we got a tournament arc. <laughs> yeah, we get a tournament arc, a fucking shonen tournament arc for uh, all the gladiators and stuff. And like Jen Lins is like, yeah, I can't really. They want a paladin representative in this tournament. And he's like, I can't afford to give anyone to it. So why don't you do it? You're like, okay, I can do it. <laughs> yeah, I don't okay. mind. I know half of the contestants anyway. So yeah, <laughs> dude, my favorite is when you go to go to that tournament. If you have done the. Uh, the mailman moogle quest line there's a guy in that quest line who is a pretty boy gladiator and he's like the most handsome gladiator in the world right oh i remember this and his moogle quest line was about him two-timing two women uh <laughs> oh i remember that guy and he's a contestant in this tournament and so if you have done that quest line and you go to this tournament he goes oh i see you are another contestant wait a minute i know you don't you deliver the mail <laughs> aren't you the mailman <laughs> the mail guy <laughs> He's just so confused on why a mailman is there at the Gladiators Coliseum. <laughs> Imagine getting your ass beat by a mailman. Oh, God. it's so funny. And then God. it's really great because then you get to see Mila interact more with people. Uh, she comes back and she's an amazing character. Super fun. Uh, and then Aldis even makes a return and he comes back as the Black Lotus. A knight clad in uh, black armor, helmeted. And he also has a kid. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. And so he has a kid now. And then when like when it comes to the fact that we, like when we learn Black Lotus is actually Aldis, uh, Mila's all upset because uh, she thinks her crush Aldis has now gone off to another woman and then had a child. Oh, I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> I was laughing so hard. <laughs> And it turns out that the child of Aldous is just like an orphan that he uh, is training uh, so they can, you know, defend themselves and defend others in the future uh, to, you know, try and get his life back on track. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a huge misunderstanding there. It's really funny. Um, and then Aldous is uh, trying to uh, get a duel with you in the finals and everything like that. But the monetarists are like, hey, we got a lot of money gambled on this tournament. And uh, if you, if the Black Lotus doesn't f purposely throw the fight, then we're going to kidnap his kid and murder him. Always with them fucking monitors, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and so the kid does get kidnapped, and then like, bef like it's one of those last minute things where you're like, but the finals are like in an hour, and like you gotta run off and go save the kid, and then come back and have your final match against Alden. <laughs> doing the extra mile 
Yup. And then after all is said and done, of course you win. Uh, Aldous gets defeated, and he's like, damn, you're good. And it's just like, I know. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's like, I can't progress unless I beat you. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> It's almost like the story requires this. <laughs> um, and then after all that, Jen, uh, I was going to say Jen Lins, uh Aldous uh, vows to get better and stronger, and he also will follow in your footsteps and travel the world to become a better fighter. And then Mila's like, what about me? And he's like, I don't know. What, and then leaves. what about you? <laughs> yeah, what about you? <laughs> And you haven't gotten to this part yet, Chris, uh, but the level 80 Paladin quest line from Shadowbringers is amazing. It's so oh, funny. Man. I can't wait. It's <laughs> it's so funny because he just goes off to become like... <laughs> he, while you were out there having fun in another world, he was, tra he was studying the blade. <laughs> <laughs> While you were picking up girls, I was studying the blade. Not even joking. He comes back in the kimono. He's got the samurai sword. Oh my god. <laughs> oh no. And so like he's just like, now I'll show you what true strength is. And like he gets into the samurai stance. He's ready to fight you. And your character just stands there menacingly. <laughs> <laughs> And your character's just standing there, and then, like, you see it from his point of view. There's a huge shockwave of energy, and then his whole world goes pitch black as you, like, glow <laughs> as bright as, like, the sun in front of him. And he just goes, how? How did you become so strong? <laughs> Truly grossly incandescent. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're just like, oh, I found something worth to protect. And he says, oh. And then he just forfeits. Like, you don't even get to fight him. He just forfeits. Nice. I also saved another world, by the way. <laughs> and then Mila's just standing there like, what the fuck? You're not going to fight? <laughs> you went all the way here, waiting for this guy to show up. That and you quit. <laughs> it's so funny, man. It's such a good AD quest. I loved it. Man, it's a, is there, like there is some lulls in the Paladin storyline, but there's some fun stuff in it. It's a little yeah. goofy. Yeah. Man. Honestly, though, like outside of the Paladin quest line, you all I only really ever saw the Paladins during the Madrigal quest. <laughs> yeah. I so, so I'm sitting here like thinking about how like, oh yeah, they're stretched thin, right? You know, they're really yeah. protecting those Sultana. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're wasting their time with the shenanigans, which is fucking Hildebrand. <laughs> Man. I mean, I know they're over there protecting like the, the valuable treasure, right? But yeah. <laughs> also like devoting two or three paladins to deal with Hildebrand is a... that's kind of sad a little bit like it's it's not even something you can just be like oh yeah I kick him out or anything like that because right, Hildebrand cause, cause God yeah because yeah. Godbert's a member of the syndicate he's he's yeah. his father is a government employee but like let's be honest Godbert wouldn't give a shit nah not, right. not at all yeah, like both character Amanda Man does what Amanda Bill can Oh man, it'd be it's so, so funny. funny. Three paladins to babysit Mr. Fucking <laughs> Hildebrand. <laughs> and you can tell, like, I don't remember the dialogue exactly, but they're like, I can't believe we're fucking here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't even be placed on the vault duty. Like, come on. Yeah, they're just stuck there. They have to just watch all these stupid shenanigans happen. Man. God, the Hildebrand yeah. quest lines are so good. Oh, yeah, we need to dedicate an entire podcast to that. Definitely. I would love to talk about those quest I gotta lines. finish it first. Yeah, you <laughs> freaking haven't touched it since Heaven's Word. It's, it's a lot of work, you know? I gotta be, like... I don't mean the I don't mean the Heaven's Word Hildebrand quest. No, like, since we were in Heaven's Word. Oh, that's not true. <laughs> it's not true. I, I need to, you know... What, whatever. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, no, we were waiting for Elaine to get uh, to freaking Heaven's Word. So we were like, let's do the Mandrible quest. Man, I feel like we haven't talked in a while. 
I did do a few quests. <laughs> yeah. I in Shadowbringers I did a few quests, okay? I'll yeah. let you know right now. Yeah. I got to the Costa del Sol part. That's still <laughs> ARR. Hey, I, but I still did it. I'm I'm making my way there. Yeah? You know what I have to say about that? Sink. <laughs> The slow clap. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, fucking. Yeah, you need to finish it, dude. The the Heavensward one is freaking hilarious. Yeah. Eventually. Anyways, let's get off of this tangent. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about we'll talk about the Mandeville stuff. Uh, In the future. When, when, yeah, when we get to it. Um, I was gonna say I didn't have a lot to say about paladins really, just because. I have a level 22 gladiator. Okay, well, let's shift gears a bit then. Uh, the... My only interaction with my, uh, paladins is that they're always the main tank whenever I leveled up my tanks. <laughs> because paladins have so much mitigation. There's, mm -hmm. They have so many tools, and it's just all about protecting themselves and then protecting others. Uh, on the flip side, though, like when you get a bad paladin, like it shows. <laughs> Cause it's like, why am I getting aggro? I don't even have tank stance on. And it's just like, please, all you gotta do is just spam your AOEs. You were in a dungeon, <laughs> just spam them. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you're a new tank, just spam AOEs, man. Keep aggro. Just it really, tank it really stance be... on, spam AOE. You got this. <laughs> Dark Knight, you can literally level to 80 by just pressing one button. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy how different it feels, though. Compared to the least, things? Yeah, at least for me, it feels so different playing Paladin. It's because they have it's because they have so many options in comparison to like some of the other right. tanks. And then like, they already have that like twenty five percent chance of parry with the shield. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the shield That's ex ridiculous. adds extra protection. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sitting there like, do I really need to mitigate? Or <laughs> I want to. Like, I, I wanna... can save it. But also, oh, like, I get it back every ten seconds. So, I want um, I want a tank, a new tank class that's just two shields. You get fifty percent parry chance. Oh no, no, we already know what happens when you get two shields. Yeah, it's called Cape Westwood. <laughs> <laughs> that's the hardest trial in the game. Oh yeah, definitely. I, always, I struggle every time I get it. <laughs> Wife's galore is what happens. Bro, when you we get mean, to the ad phase, bro. You mean you struggle to hit the boss because he's already <laughs> dead? <laughs> he's got too many shields! Good. I feel like we could do an episode on just freaking stupid Cape Westwood encounters. <laughs> no. No. I'm gonna be absent that episode. <laughs> I'm call, I, I use my pay time off to call out of the as long as podcast. as long as Cape as long as the Cape Westwind podcast episode is as long as the Cape Westwind trial. Then I'll <laughs> it's, it's just like two minutes, long. minutes. Man, <laughs> by the time you finish this podcast, uh, Cape Westwind trial shall be done. Man. But, uh, yeah, so it's like, I feel like the only time I really notice paladins is when they're really bad. Uh, cause like, especially when you're leveling up, or at least when I was leveling up my Dark Knight and my Gunbreaker, um, it was always very noticeable when a paladin was not doing their mitigation and then, like, maintaining enmity. <laughs> yeah, it can be a struggle sometimes, especially, like, if you're playing, like, with a Gunbreaker, uh, gunbreakers, if they have their tank stance on as well, they can easily out damage you. Well, not mm -hmm. easily, but they definitely can out damage you. That just uh, means the gunbreaker is not doing their job and jerking you. Yeah. yeah. That's that's all that really means. But, to be fair, I, I'm a leveling up tank. I don't actually tank. <laughs> yeah, tank, Paladin on this new character I played. Yeah, Paladin was the class I leveled up through and got through all the Shadowbringers and stuff with. That's also what my alt is right now. It's a really cool class. Uh, the mitigations they have are amazing. I love them. Um, in my opinion, I know a lot of people prefer the other ones because they have the minute cooldown less, but I think the invuln for Paladin is personally my favorite of all the invulns. 
because unlike everybody else who has downsized their, their mitigation, uh, to the invuld, I mean, uh, Paladins is just, you're fucking invincible. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. So how does it feel going into Endwalker that your favorite class is the poster boy? It feels great. I always love it. Like <laughs> thick ass armor, thick ass armor. Yeah, the armor looks amazing. The cape is super cool. Um, it feels like it's just the cape is inverted from the Stormblood cape for Paladin's mm-hmm. armor. Um, instead of it being a blue cape with the shield design decor on the cape being white, it is now white with the blue shield design. Uh, you also got a hood. <laughs> Yeah, and it also has a hood. I wish you could pull the hood up, though. <laughs> I remember when they showed the Endwalker reveal, uh, the yeah, the reveal trailer. You were freaking out about the Paladin. Armor. I mean, like, it was cool as shit. It is cool as shit. It was so great. I was so excited, and like especially because there's so much like. It's all like it also had a bit of reference to Final Fantasy IV with Cecil, who was a Paladin, yeah, that's, and he that's also goes yeah. to the Mer. <laughs> Yeah, that's something we can discuss. Uh, where it's like really the going from Dark Knight to Paladin is also the yeah, expansions is so good. <laughs> it's also a four reference. Uh, yeah, very good four reference. Uh, Paladin, oh my god, yeah, we can't talk about this class without talking about how in Endwalker it literally got the best abilities <laughs> for the expansion. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like the new abilities are so good. Because we have Sheltron, which currently is still really good, because what it does is uh, it consumes your Oath Gauge. And for 50 Oath Gauge, um, you can activate Sheltron, and Sheltron blocks incoming attacks. So it's a really great way to mitigate auto attacks through you and uh, mitigate damage without really spending heavy resources. All Because the, the cooldown for it is pretty short overall. I want to say the recast timer is only like 10 seconds or something like that. Yeah, it's just getting the Oath Gauge up to use it again. Yeah. So, Sheltron's really good because you can use it as your second mitigation for a lot of your primary mitigation. Like with Sentinel, Rampart. Um, Oh man, I haven't played this class in a hot minute. I'm trying. There's a third one specifically. I'm trying to remember. I can't remember it all. Yeah, I, can't I wouldn't remember. be able to help you on this. If I don't play the class like main, I don't. I don't ever. I can never remember the abilities. I always forget them. <laughs> if it's yeah, not it monk, I don't care. <laughs> it is escaping me a little bit because I think the last time I actually played paladin and hard content, or as when you got first to tank, met me, <laughs> was when I first met you guys. And I think the very last time was Seed of Sacrifice, actually. Because <laughs> I, yeah, ad- I was adamant that I wanted to play that that patch as a paladin. <laughs> yeah, how did that go for you? I was fun. I still love the tank. It's my favorite tanking class in the game. I know, yeah. That's why, that's why I'm stepping down as main tank for everything. Because I know people want to tank. Also, I just love tanking. Tanking is so fun. I mean, yeah, I could go fun. into healing, but I don't know if people would like that. Yeah, we have like four people. That Everyone want to play Sage. dislike that. Yeah, I say like four people want to play Sage. I mean, do y'all trust? Do y'all trust me to go in, into freaking savages? As a I mean, I have no problem. Yeah, I, don't yeah, have, I problem. have no problem. I mean, you're willing to learn. I'm not matters. though. Okay. <laughs> well, like, here's, the th- here's the thing, right? You die to mechanics because you're too focused on your rotation. So what are you gonna focus on there, broil too? Bro, I gotta focus on <laughs> that shit so hard. No, you don't understand, broil four. So much concentration. Oh my god. I'm gonna spam it. I'm green DPS. Because I gotta, now, <laughs> as a healer Green Paladin. You don't I say you don't even have to worry about paladins anymore with the new expansion. Because everything they do heals them. <laughs> Paladin is its own healer. Man, they said N Walker you get we get four healers, right? It sounded like we're getting <laughs> six. <laughs> Paladin just heals through everything it can do now. All of its combo... Its combo already gave some health regen back, but then yeah. they made it to where your spell combos also now give health back. It 
and like not only health, but it also gives ma- uh, not mana. The Confitor combo gives mana, but your regular spells uh, also all now give you uh, health whenever you cast them. So Holy Spirit and Holy Circle now heal you for every time you cast them, and then Divine Veil is no longer just a shield. It is also now going to be a heal in self. Nice. Oh. Yeah, so Divine Veil just got a lot better as well. Uh, yeah. And you can't... I've st- I keep getting like sidetracked because I keep thinking about the Confitor combo. Because it's easily the coolest combo in the game now. Dude, when I got to, when I first started getting the, the magic rotation for Valden, I was like, wait, hold up. I hate that I like told myself that I wanted to level up tanks last for like all my maxing out. Yeah. But oh, the magic combo feels so nice on Paladin. It's so satisfying to do. And it's like it, I it's that's why I like Paladin quite a bit to play is because it never feels like you have downtime. Yeah. It never and feels it's like streamlined. Yeah, it's really streamlined and you never feel like, well, I got to wait for my burst phase. No, you're kind of just you keep doing stuff like you're always active because you immediately go from your fight or flight melee combo burst phase and then you activate your Scat to then go into your magic burst phase. <laughs> Rinse and, and repeat till death. Yeah, you just keep doing it back and forth. You keep rotating through the two things. And then uh, Intervention also got buffed in the new expansion, which I'm really excited for. Uh I want to say Intervention now heals as well. Man, it's probably just like Warrior. Everything just heals the regions. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I'll just click it and then there it is. <laughs> it's just a heal. We got it. Warrior and Paladin both are getting ready for all of the new skull, like the new uh, Sage players. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to forget to heal you. (laughs) So you can just keep yourself alive through all those. Oh, yo, Ryan. Did you... Were you tanking for when you ran through uh, Titan Savage? Yeah. I can't remember. I played Warrior, though, for the Titan Savage. Oh, right. I I don't know. say, like... Paladin and Warrior are so fun to prog with. (laughs) Because you always end up the last person alive. (laughs) They're just unkillable. I just love it because, like, whenever you progress Paladin, it feels so good. Because, like, you can either be the main tank and help get through a lot of things that you probably shouldn't survive through because of your just straight-up utility. And then if you also feel really lazy, you could be the off tank. And then it's just like, tank swap. And you're just like, eh, cover. <laughs> there we go. That's good enough. <laughs> I feel like that's kind of one of my anxieties in trying to level up my Paladin is just, like, I don't want to be the main tank, even in leveling content. Because <laughs> I just, whenever I play this game, I just want to like turn off my brain. Um, yeah. so it's like even if it's like easy content, um, I just like don't like being the lead, and that's like I feel like that's the case for a lot of people. Just not even just for paladin, but for tanking in general, they don't really like being a lead. Um, yeah, because tanks and healers both have a lot of responsibility when it comes to a lot of things. That's true. And so I feel, be... I feel like being a DPS, I can fuck around a lot more <laughs> during content. Yeah, whereas like if you screw up as like a paladin or any tank in general, and you just like accidentally like you dodge an AOE but then the boss is now facing the party you can just cleave everybody and nearly kill your whole yeah. party through it oh believe me when a tank freaking is circling <laughs> <laughs> that's just, the most annoying shit to me they're just running around in a circle the boss is just acting like a disco ball you're just like please <laughs> my position <laughs> see that's the thing I don't have to deal with that I just, I just play as tank <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one who spins in the circle <laughs> man it was crazy when I started leveling up Paladin this time around, though. Because back in uh, original Realm Reborn and original Heaven's Ward, before I took that first break, before I took the break in Stormblood, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Paladin tanking was so different back then. And I actually right, never touched DPS it. Really. Stack, 
DPS stance or whatever. Yeah, you had DPS stances and uh, entity, like maintaining entity was really difficult in that game, actually. And Paladin back then didn't even have uh, Total Eclipse, which is their sp sp uh, sword spin. They actually had another ability back then that was called Flash. What did that do? Was it a Conal? No, so Flash is also an AoE, but it does no damage, it blinds the enemies, and it increases enmity on you. Okay. And so, weird. it's weird, but that was like the best way to keep enmity. And so, if you were leveling Warrior in Realm Reborn, you had to cross-class it, because it was actually important. And like, yeah, tanking was a whole different beast back then because entity was that really difficult it. to keep. I'm glad I wasn't there. God, whenever we talk about old school AR, I'm like, how did we? How did I fucking play that? <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of not like newer player friendly stuff in ARR. Yeah, definitely n <laughs> no. <laughs> because yeah, especially for somebody playing on their own. Yeah, if you were playing on your own, it was also really difficult, especially if you didn't look anything up, because there was so many abilities that you had to cross-class to keep your character relevant. Yeah. And, and so you were just, like, having to, like, go through a checklist of, like, I gotta level up this class, not because I want yeah. to, but because I need this ability, and then I need that, like... Also, going in, my only MMO experience was, like, Maple Story and, like, a couple other, like, free MMOs. <laughs> so it was real different going. Yeah, because like, like, like they actually expect you to do stuff in combat. Yeah, there's actual like engagement in all of it. <laughs> Man, Paladin, yeah, was a whole different beast back then. Thinking in general was Thinking was a lot less popular back in the day too. Yes. Nobody wanted to be tanked. Well, that's not true. Some people wanted to be tanked. Yeah. I think uh, they were the least played. They were the least accessible, I feel like. Yeah. Although, saying that, I feel like pretty much all of pre, like, Stormblood was pretty unaccessible. To an extent, because, like, old tanking back then, it was a real struggle, and it kind of has me questioning about some of the choices for Endwalker a little bit. Um, I think they're a lot better now at design, though, than back Oh, in no, AR. for sure. They definitely found where they want to go with their design. Yeah, and the reason I'm bringing that up is just because uh, in ARR, um, you, had a def you had two different types of tanks. You specifically had main tank design and off tank design. And so huh. you actually kind of ran into an issue every now and then where you would get Warrior, who was designed as the off tank on purpose... And you would get them in a dungeon or something, and it would be a lot more of a struggle because they're not as good at mitigation or keeping enmity as the paladin. That's so weird to hear. What, fighting for enmity? No, no, like, warrior not being good at as a tank, because they're a main tank nowadays. Oh yeah, the viability of all the classes was way wonkier. Like, now it's just, oh my god, I can't believe we got a gunbreaker for a main tank. <laughs> Whatever, deal with it. Every, everybody else, every, 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 now and now it's just like, oh man. Warrior? Perfect. He's not gonna fucking die. He's yeah, just gonna, just... He's just gonna heal. <laughs> <laughs> they just, Paladin. They're too angry to die. Paladin, I feel it's like a healer's wet dream, though. Like, just fall asleep hitting that broil button over and over again. I mean... <laughs> Don't worry, they'll clemency themselves. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> sometimes I forget. Sometimes I forget there's a tank. They'll just keep themselves alive. They can do it. Yeah. And... It's like, it's like that uh, teenager that you trust to uh, babysit the other kids. <laughs> oh They're the responsible one. Yeah. If you think about it, when it comes to the tanks, like <laughs> the paladin is the dadliest dad of all the tanks. <laughs> Yeah, they're the ones who like, who are like they frustrate you because they make sure you always go to bed on time and like they make sure you eat your vegetables, and you're just like I hate my dad, 
And, but then, like, when you have, like, a piano recital or something, and you're nervous, and you peek out at the crowd, there they are, front, like, front row, dead center, clapping, all tripod happy Tripod camera. You. Yeah, tripod camera, and they're there cheering you on and supportive. And you're just like, thanks, Dad. <laughs> Good. And then you have... Man, it makes me think. I was like, yeah, you would have Warrior. Warrior, as the dad, would just be the one that, like... <laughs> He's the type of dad that, like, has got the lighting, riding lawnmower, and he's got the baby on his, like, lap while he's got a beer in the <laughs> other hand. <laughs> You're right. You're right. So, if we're going, like, D&D alignments, right? Paladins yeah. would be, like, lawful good, right? Yeah, they are. I mean, I think they define the class, the, the alignment, right? I think yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, especially because paladins in D&D have to be lawful good. Yeah, just paladins in general. I think if you slap that name, yeah. Yep, you got a god. You're you believe god. The innocent. Can't get That's, more is, Oh, yeah, is that something that comes that. up? Is it like, do the, do the paladins have like a god figure other than the sultan? No. Okay, that's interesting. They don't worship a god. Like, most of their stuff comes from their oath. And so the oath in general is, it's pretty personal and it varies from person to person, but their oath is something that usually kind of still falls on the same line of helping others, uh, protecting those who can't protect themselves, um, or even uh, stopping any evil that you can, and just overall just making the world a better place. Oh, okay. And so it's with those oath and those convictions is where the paladin draws most of their powers from. And just then, their own more or like what is it, fortitude of will or something like that? Yeah. And then that's actually why like whenever you see them cast a spell, they always hold their sword up, is because through their convictions and oath they then channel that power through their sword as like a conduit and then cast the spell. Sounds like oh. Green Lantern. <laughs> Green I was Lantern zoning is... out a little bit and I was like, hey, what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Green Lantern. They are oh, the does, that mean, does that mean the uh, the Knights of Ishgard are the Sinestro Corps? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> The heavens ward themselves. Oh no. You can't escape them. They're always here, always ready. I I want an ultimate fight surrounded by them. We are getting one. Yeah, I think the next expansion that's gonna be Is it? the next mm -hmm. ultimate fight. Oh mm -hmm. man, it's gonna be the ultimate fight I start with then. Yeah, it's King Thordrin and the Nidhogg fight. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's the fight that we're starting in, right, everybody? <laughs> that's the fight. I do want to do an ultimate soon. Yeah. yeah, we just need to figure out schedules and all that. Impossible. It's impossible. Dude. Impossible. Yeah. Impossible. Impossible. Blue. One of us has to get rich and then just pay everybody to do <laughs> sit around for an ultimate. It's just that simple. Yeah, if that's why we're depending on you and the viewer to subscribe. Oh my no. god, <laughs> cut that out! Cut that out. <laughs> I have a plan. What we can do is we can just go to Old Aw, we can just take Oath Keeper, and then we can just sell it somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll have enough ultimate raid money. <laughs> Perfect legend, am I right? That's what we'll become. <laughs> Become what we must. <laughs> <laughs> Cynical <laughs> and jaded. I remember the. Oh my gosh, it's so late. But I just remembered the other mitigation that I really love from Paladin from way back, like twenty minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Passage of Arms. Adrian, put that in. <laughs> <laughs> Passage of Arms. Great mitigation. The ability is so fucking cool. Awesome it's, animation. Yeah, where you you just slam your sword down to like barricade yourself as you hold up your shield, and then it's just the wings that sprout out from your back to protect everyone behind you. So cool! It's so cool. Oh, speaking of protecting, big deal. I get to do that in Orbone. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh man. You know, I started playing Paladin whenever uh, I went through that vault cutscene. <laughs> and I and I got the shield. <laughs> yeah. I got the shield as a reward. I was like, yeah, I'm doing this for him. <laughs> <laughs> And I didn't regret it at all. <laughs> yeah, that's the shield I even use for my glamour still. It's the only shield I will <laughs> use. Mm -hmm. If I ever leveled up the uh, paladin, yeah, that's definitely gonna be the shield I use. You can you, you can wear it at level one. Yeah, I know, but it's a little. I'm level, you have to I'm be worthy. Two. You must Always, be worthy. <laughs> it makes me think of the joke where everyone's just like, "That's why, <laughs> that's why it happened." He already had a level one shield equipped. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh no. Is this is this gonna go in the spoiler territory? Well we've been spoiling crap. Yeah, I said we've been talking about spoilers. The vault yeah. is getting its own episode though. Yeah, it's definitely getting its own oh, episode. It's getting its own episode for sure. We're gonna have a sprout that episode with us. We'll probably have like a mini We're gonna have a live reaction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We have to make a sprout friend. <laughs> right. He's uh, advertising limbs. At, hey, <laughs> hey! <laughs> Want to be in a video? It'll be really cool. We can't pay you though. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> Adrian, put that uh, put that one away for later. <laughs> yeah, Paladin, super fun. Oh yeah, and another thing that Paladin makes that makes them better than the other tanks, they get two stuns. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh yeah, they do, huh? Yeah, they right. get they get low A blow. Global, global shield bash. Shield bash. <laughs> On your global global, cooldown. yeah. <laughs> Why is the global so useful? It's because they, that was the way they designed it, so that way Paladin would always have a stun at the ready when needed. I Which feel like was... whenever something is on global cooldown, <laughs> I never have it ready. Honestly, like it was more important back in ARR, <laughs> and so it hasn't aged the greatest. But it's still there. We can still stun things. Oh boy, you know that cast timer that la that is shorter than your global cooldown? Yeah, just use that shield bash, please. <laughs> it's so good. Okay. All right, I think we can cut there. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed that episode on Paladin. Um, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, be, 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 subscribe. Keep that in. We're gonna just <laughs> we're gonna keep rolling. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, if you like the episode, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, and make sure you send a uh, tip to our editor. Uh, Adrian, his Kofi is going to be co-fi.com slash pandasol. <laughs> Thank you. Why are you still here? <laughs> it's the end of the episode. Okay. Get out of here. Recording. <laughs> There's nothing here. There's nothing here for you. Get out of here. Click away. Yeah, there's no we'll be back this in two weeks. 30 like this is just 30 seconds of black screen. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to be here, I mean, I guess you can like comment and subscribe. Um, and make sure you send uh, our editor some love over at uh, ko-fi.com slash Pandasol. That's Pandasol, P-A-N-D-A-S-A-L. All right, I'll get the, the fuck out. S A L. I said S A L. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> it likes a description. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>